think if not anything, food gave me a common language to speak with anybody, really anywhere. And without a doubt, I'd say that the outdoors influences how I cook and how I sort of dream about food. Chef Eduardo Garcia. It's funny, I lead with a chef, and at some point it became a title that followed me, right? But Eduardo Garcia. How to describe Eduardo, that is a full one. Um, one of the things that I really appreciate most about Eduardo is his suave vive. I can't really say that I know anybody that's like Eduardo. He's, uh, he's very unique. Growing up, a lot of that passion was sometimes considered out of place, very vivacious. I got kicked out of nine schools, and I think it's so easy to even think of myself troublemaker, which I was, but not interested in learning, which is not the case. The first dish I remember making as a kid was french fries. I'd seen people do it in burger shacks, you know, how hard could it be? And, I, and we basically just like slow poached those fries and they were soggy and limp and probably raw, a little salt, and we did our best. I guess in many cases, a limp, soggy, undercooked, <laughs> you know, piece of potato could be seen as a failed French fry, and sure, I'd call it that too. But the, that, the success was the value of that experience. The success was, you know, like recognizing, oh, we can do this. Little, let's try this again. Fire, food, friends. That was the first equation at work. Let's try this again. Oh, okay. I can cook. We'll put those on the focaccia. I'm gonna put these in the frijoles. Oh, that's a good idea. There. Oh, I can't make beans and not think of puppy. He would always ask when I was coming home. He'd say, ¿Qué quieres comer? Yeah. What do you want to eat? So I grew up not knowing my dad. Um, it wasn't an active part of our lives. But at 13, we met our dad and really got in touch with our Latino roots. And I think that helped fill in a blank. I remember calling home on a payphone from anywhere in the world and the first many minutes of our conversation would be about food. I'd barely get a hi from him. Hola hijo, mira, estaba cocinando eso y un mm, poquito de sal, pimienta, ajo, sofrito, eso. Riquísimo. He would just go off about what he just made. And then, so how are you? You know, he's like, how are you doing? It turned me on to sort of a cultural part of why we cook or why we celebrate food in our home, in our family. Graduating cooking school at 18, student loans kicked in. Six months later, December, a boat was in town looking for a chef. Had to do it. Had to do it. No idea what it meant. Didn't know what it entailed. Didn't even consider what it would be like to cook in 20-foot seas, cook from different cultures, navigate different languages to buy your food. I knew it scared the light out of me. I said yes, you know, go for it. There was a morning and the teammate crew member who would be up early at five with me wasn't up and six o'clock rolls around and still not seen and couldn't find her anywhere in the boat. And I ended up finding her on the back of the boat where the back of the boat meets the water with her feet in the water and she was sobbing. And she had woke up to a message that her grandmother had passed away. And when you're in the middle of a boat in the middle of the sea, you don't have many options. And in that moment, I thought, well, what can I do? How can I help? And I thought, well, I'll make her her favorite lunch as a starter. Then I'll make her her favorite dinner and feed it to the crew. And I think I witnessed it sort of crack just enough into her like, complete sorrow 
to feel a little love, a little hug, a little joy, a little light in that dark place of losing someone, you know? And gosh, that, that is when I fell in love with food. It was my first summer home after nine years spent yachting. I started focusing on elk hunting and archery elk hunting. And I went out early, just like any other kind of fall hunt day, and ended up in a drainage that I'd never been in. And in that drainage, there was a can. And so I really didn't think anything of taking a knife off my hip, putting it in my left hand. And, I, and before I was even maybe this far from the base of the can, 2,400 volts arced from that live source at the base of the can into my knife. 50 days, give or take, in the burn trauma ICU, University of Utah. <laughs> you come out of ICU as an amputee, still 30 years old, and what a, what a unique position to be in, you know, wondering, well, why didn't I die? It was like my family, my friends, my business, all got rocked, you know, all got rocked. My interest in sharing my love of food with others was seasoned, you know, with this whole new ingredient, which was make this moment count. In a way, cleared up a lot of noise for me. I, I, I would not be here without the help of others, right? I just would not be here without the help of others. Hey B, nice to see you. Hola Isabel, thanks for coming. Hey young man, hi Isabel, hi. nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Well, it's pretty soft. Is it? Feel it. Not frozen. Oh, wow. That's the most forgettable meal is the one that requires little to no effort. For, for me and my palate, it's so far past the palate that's in my mouth. It's like my palate up here, you know, too. It should come with effort. You know, you have to you be part of the active ingredient, you know? Be there and be present, and that's my favorite thing. So I think for me, to not just put attention into it, but to celebrate it, to act it out, to invite others to participate, let's do a weed and feed, you know, come over and work, and then maybe send that friend off with either that memory or a food article or both. It's the sessions where you're working for it together that I feel it calls to something that we've been doing a long time. That experience of growing up in Montana and started to influence my professional career. And at some point I found myself really wanting to share fire with you, share smoke with you. Like, so if I could encourage you to come eat on the beach with me and I could start a fire and I could prep all these ingredients and the beauty of the kitchen and make them, you know, perfectly seasoned. But if I could cook it for you over smoke, like that's what I wanted to do. There are so many important parts to bringing in others to share an experience with you. And I think the part that I maybe love the most is when I feel that others have gained in their life value through something we share together. All of a sudden you have 
not just the work being done, maybe in a shorter amount of time, but you've now added an ingredient to that moment, to that dish that transcends getting the job done. to descend upon the table once I get these done. It should come with effort. No, I mean, we're only providing for the most important thing to us, which is life. 